what if I don't have a target? Do I still want to suppress? Or am I using that as an advantage to like, let's get up and just move bound, bound further? Still do it. I mean, for me personally, I mean, situation's going to dictate. You got to play the, the scenario as it's actually presented itself. But if nobody's shooting at you right now or sporadic contact, I'm still holding. I'm still waiting. They pop up. I hit them. The got second it. you're gone, now I'm going. Got it, got like, it. Got we don't it. need to shoot just to shoot. Just to shoot. Yeah. Like, well, I know when you battle drill this in the military, you would literally just be standing there. There's no target. You're like, tsh, tsh. or if you're like high speed, you're like, and then you're out of ammo. You're doing tactical and slide lock reloads to keep your gun up, but there's no target. And it makes sense to me. So you, you wouldn't necessarily shoot just to shoot, but if you have a presented target, then you would certainly shoot. It's the same thing. Right? It translates over to law enforcement and civilian life. If you're in law enforcement, you're not just shooting to shoot. Yeah. A civilian, you get into a contact, you're not just blazing on the middle of Hollywood Boulevard, yeah. trying to cover for your wife. I mean, you have to take accurate shots. So they have to be into a body. The yeah. body's successful bullet trap. It's like you have to hit what you're shooting at. Yeah. So. I mean, and at a minimum, pulling security. For sure. I think it's applicable to just civilians. They get caught in those weird situations and just understanding. You don't always have to go forward. You can come backwards as well. Yeah. Um, just to get away from the threat. And yeah, we, we always, uh, I, I've seen it in your live fires and also have seen it on our ranges and our live fires. It's always like a linear thing, right? It's, it's like the, the safety protocols or you're moving back exactly in a line, but in a, obviously a, the you know, city streets of an urban sprawl, there's lots of obstacles, lots of cover, and that can be lateral movement as well. So you don't have to stay married to one direction of travel. Even the military, we've got that, uh, the old quote, it's not a push to think, it's a push to talk. Yeah. It's the same thing. Before I get up to move, I've already picked a spot I'm gonna go to, and I've calculated that distance. How long is it gonna take me to get there? What's alone the fire? How accurate is that fire coming in? And am I going to sprint? Am I going to outrun my security? Because mm. if it takes me 45 seconds to get there, I'm putting you all in a super shitty position. Yeah. It's like, I, you can't be selfish right now. If I have to only run 10 feet and drop down for cover, that's what I have to do. Okay. So I'm making those bounds for the group, not myself. Okay. Yeah, because I was thinking about getting a Land Cruiser and just going to Chick-fil-A. I'm like, I'll meet up with you guys later. And that's not how to do it. We got to bound, short, bounded yep. movements. Yep. Two and to three second rushes. And if it doesn't make sense, like if we get there and you see it, it's back, we just have to make that move. And if guys lose it in this, I mean, there's a lot of wooded shit in here. If you lose it, you might have to do a, a verbal. If we're not running comms, yeah. you have to wave out this way. And now we bring it into a ravine. We have to cross terrain feature. Yeah. Got to make sure the guys know that. Because if not, they'll just keep going that straight line, especially at night. Um, last question. When you, when you say move and bound and seek cover, does that mean going to a prone, going to a kneeling, standing, or does it depend? It all depends. Yeah. I mean, to me, we've is been it caught covers, out in the open. Concealment? Yeah. Are there outs? Yeah. I mean, is it nighttime? What's, what are the, all the environmentals? Yeah. If it's nighttime, you can probably do whatever you want to. Yeah, you stand. Yeah, you can yeah. stand, you can crawl, you can be on a knee, whatever, gonna give you the best foot forward. I feel like a lot of guys, they, they get stuck in that schoolhouse mentality, I have to be in the prone. And once you get there, you realize you can't affect them because you can't see them. Oh, yeah. It's like now I'm laying in kit and I can't actually get up. Yeah. Dropping to a knee for me doesn't really matter. Yeah, it's a good point. Because when you go prone, you start losing, obviously, uh, the ability to shoot in grazing fire. And even if you are impacting the potential enemy, you're not taking advantage of that tactic. And then, um, and it takes a lot a longer time to get up off your ass. Exactly. Yeah. It takes you longer to get up. And say somebody has bounded somehow behind you. Like you go to bound, I go to bound, and Cole goes to leapfrog me, but he ends up behind me. Yeah. And now I'm laying down the prone. I'm in camouflage. You can't see me. Yeah. All of a sudden, he's laying down fire for you, and I stand up in the middle of it. Get smacked. So we've got to be super heads on a swivel all the way. Okay. I like that yeah. beanie you're wearing. It's my favorite one. Yeah, man. It's cool. It's so cool. Yeah. Lincoln profile. Just check that out. Um, all right. So, guys, <laughs> um, I, I think I got it. Let's just do it. Let's send, let's send it. Are we doing it? Yeah. Uh, let's just do it.
guys. So um, I have, like I said in the beginning, my own curiosity and, and how different services and guys do stuff. What I've told you before, and I think is a, a culture shift with Phil Craft Survival, and also I've recognized with GBRS, is you need to have an open form of discussion when it comes to tactics. Never close your mind to like doctrinal um, end all be all solutions, because there's always a way, a path. Um, yeah, sure, some work better in different environments than others, but kind of open your mind to that. And I like that idea and I like learning. So that's why I wanted kind of you to experience that with me. Um, and even the things that we're doing here, I've never heard the call all set. And you heard it at the very end. All set is, hey, I'm set, but we're out of sight or potential sound of the enemy. And we're not taking contact. So you just don't keep going into oblivion. You have to make a decision at some point. And I've never, like, I've done that in the Woodline and in, in, in Pineland and North Carolina and Ranger School at Fort Benning. But to end that, it's like, when do you end it? Well, an all set call. Learn something uh, new every day. Um, when, when you guys revert back to these basic skill sets, does it take you back to kind of organizations that you've been in uh, before? Because I assume that's like uh, an SMU's practice is practicing the basic and mastering, right? That's all it is. And be able to do the same thing you do in the daytime, just as good at night. So there's no daytime tactic and nighttime tactic, you gotta be able to do them both. Because hmm. a lot of times you can't control the ambient conditions. Hmm. Like you get spun up and you've got to go at daytime, got to go in day. Yeah. Hopefully you get to do it at night, but you've got to be able to perform just as well at night as you do in the day. So there's an escalation of this. Yeah. And this is really what it is. Practice in the day, make it perfect hmm. to where you can see everybody. Now you put on night vision, you're that much more heads up. If you lose them in the trees, when you're wearing this, you blend in so well at night, it's like hosed. Yeah. I can't yeah. lose sight of you. Yeah. Do you, just out of curiosity um, for the nighttime stuff. Do you use infrared light um, when you're running back, or do you like do you keep on your flood, or do you turn it off and just maintain situational awareness of guys are at, or it depends. Usually depends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've seen it do, done both ways. Where if it's low loom, turn on your uh, infrared so you can see that at their feet, depending on how they're running with it as they're coming back towards you. What would be um, Cole if we had to translate this to civilians? What would be a good example of like when this would work for civilian uh, in civilian spaces? I mean, I think anything between buildings and cars mm -hmm. caught out in the open mm -hmm. and realizing what's cover and concealment and the difference between it. Yeah. Um, you know, the active shooter things that have been going on. And I mean, you want to get away from it. Mm. I mean, kind of going over that plan with your wife and kids. And if your wife knows or your buddy knows and heads up like, hey, I got you covered. You're not necessarily shooting. It's just they have a heads up that like, hey, you need to get down or you're open. To, you know, to move and, and get away to safety. Yeah, I, I, it, it never occurred to me because, again, this has been a long time since I've even rehashed this. But when the DJ said, you're not necessarily shooting, you're just pulling security. This whole tactic doesn't have to even involve guns at all. It's like, hey, honey, I want you to move to the vehicle with our child and I want you to go get it and stage it down the road. And you're observing because you're maintaining situational awareness instead of just everybody turning away have their back potentially towards the bad guys and start moving so it doesn't even have to be a tactic of shoot move communicate it could be observe or maintain situational awareness move and communicate it could be applicable to malls mm -hmm. like i mean you're in there with your little daughter shopping you hear gunfire like most first kind of reaction is to start running backwards it's like get down low and kind of figure out where it's coming from it yeah. may not be immediately at you and then it's like almost like you're bounding between stores yeah. and that kind of thing. Yeah. And, and, and I also like out. the, when you have people who aren't as trained as you and you tell them to move, people know how to move. Like, honey, move. They move, you're, main t you're staying switched on, but why just co-locate them with you and risk their potential lives? Get off the X and then you could, with more experienced people, you could stay in tune to what's going on. Like I, in civilian encounters, I, we never advocate for you offensively trying to do something unless it's in, an extremist situation. Like your kids in a school, you just drop them off and there's a shooting. Different circumstance than you're in a mall and you hear random pot shots that you're trying to assess as gunfire. Like curiosity killed the cat. There's no reason for you to be involved in something like that, especially if you have people that you love. Get them off the X and then read about it on the news. That, that's my mindset because I'm thinking about my family first and foremost. Um, as a closeout, um, what would be the next step 
uh, for small unit tactics beyond this? Because we, we focused on one specific break and contact drill. What's another progression uh, of this? Like what would be next? Advanced situation awareness, reading the terrain, reading the enemy uh, situation before you actually get there. So, train. I mean, right now we're surrounded on all sides. Like, do we really want to walk through this valley right now? Yeah. No, we could avoid this entire thing if we just would have skirted around this. Yeah. And avoided it all. Yeah. So it's like now you're here. Like, here's why we have a set all call because if you look at it, flat, 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 a drop off. But if we stay low, we can hook behind that mm. rather, rather field of view. Got it. That's really just the advanced situation before you even get in that situation. Mm. You have to see it unfold. Mm. With what DJ was talking about too, and I think we just do it naturally because of our past, all of us, we are always assessing like, what's my out? Wherever you are, restaurant, woods, and like always assessing like, all right, if, if something happens, I hate to say always be ready, but it just, you know, your, your situational awareness. Yeah, that's a big thing, right? I know we, um, um, we hadn't talked about it before and I want to just talk about it later, but have you guys ever done a breaking contact? Oh, I heard you on the Sean Ryan podcast and, uh, which if you haven't heard that, uh, we'll put the link below for that interview. But one of the stories of you, um, where you couldn't kill the bad guy and then you're getting zipped up with a PKM and you're literally breaking contact and trying to navigate that situation. What's crazy is this whole deal and these tactics that we went through are are uh, correlated exactly to that scenario in a way, right? Yeah. Crazy. And at the end of the day, like, for that scenario, you couldn't shoot back. So mm -hmm. the only cover you could provide was kind of a physical cover. Like, I can drop my plates in front of you, I can render self-aid, but because of the proximity, because of where blue forces were, you couldn't fire back. It was still base maneuver, but it's really just trying to provide, you know, self-aid, buddy aid. Yeah. When your commander comes and says, don't kill the bad guy, that changes things. It's because it's easy to kill the bad guy. It's a lot harder to keep him alive. And congratulations, you, keep them, you kept him alive. Yeah. Uh, listen to that podcast because it's so awesome on Sean Ryan. Uh, go check out GBRS, um, GBRS.com. GBRSgroup.com, GBRSgroupgear.com. GBRSgroupgear, what, groupgear? Groupgear.com and GBRSgroup.com. Check out the links below. That's the easy way. It's hyperlinked below. And make sure you guys follow these guys' uh, YouTube channel doing a whole bunch more content. Um, wh what's pretty cool is um, they have a Patreon channel as well. I might even do uh, like some bonus footage to get on their Patreon channel. I don't know, I, I, I don't wanna be selfish like that, put it out there in the world. Um, PhilCraftSurvival.com. My personal YouTube channel is Mike Glover Actual and you can check us on Mike Force. Uh, guys, thanks for coming out, man. It's yeah, been awesome, it's been fun. Uh, if you haven't noticed, my mouth is a little weird right now because I just um, butt stroke myself in the face with my a high-speed Magpul buttstock on my BCM. Uh, nice. Awesome. It happens. It happens. Shit, shit happens. Throwing around dynamic. Hey, man, when you're in combat, man, shit happens, dude. Combat's rough, man. It's, I, we were done, and I slipped on the ice and busted my lip, of course. Fuck. All right. Later, guys.